going forward, do we need fighters or builders or both? I say for a small, inherently vulnerable country, we need both. Our leaders must be both fighters and builders. They must have the courage and tenacity to defend Singapore. But they must also have the skill set to continue to reinvent Singapore, to make Singapore a success story. How to make Singapore a more equal society? First, I think we should raise the wages at the bottom of our social pyramid. The reason why the, pe the people at the bottom of the social pyramid earn such poor wages is because they're competing against one million imported foreign workers from poor countries in our region. In a debate I had at the Straits Times a few months ago, a member of parliament told me that a Bangladeshi cleaner in his constituency was very happy to earn $700 a month. My answer to him is yes, because he lives in a hostel. He sends most of that money back to his family in Bangladesh. And when the Singapore dollar converted in Bangladeshi currency, it's a lot of money. But can a Singapore cleaner live in dignity with a monthly wage of $700? The answer is no. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. We need to raise the wages of our workers. I would also want to say something else, that I'm very critical of our blind imitation of American corporate governance. In my father's time, almost every company practices profit sharing. At the end of the year, if the company makes money, a big a portion of that profit will be distributed to all employees. We've abandoned that because we went to American business schools and Americans don't believe in profit sharing. We've also done something very American and very wicked. Let me give you an example. We pay people in a senior positions in our company, New York and London wages. But the bulk of our workers continue to earn third world wages. I give you one specific example. The average bus worker in Singapore earns a monthly wage of 3000 $600. The CEO of the two bus companies in Singapore are paid, in one case, $1.2 million a year, and in second case, a compensation of between $1.75 to $2 million a year. Is this fair? Is running a bus company rocket science? And, and there seems to, seem to be an obscene race in Singapore between our leading financial institutions and companies. The obscene race is to see who can pay the CEO more. So, 7 million, not enough. 10 million, maybe 20 million. Have they ever asked themselves, what is the medium income of the employees in that company? What is the Gini coefficient 
in the company. I was once on the board of a bank in Singapore. And uh, one day, uh, we had a board meeting to consider the compensation package for the CEO. So the director of HR came to us and said, um, I recommend that we pay our CEO so many million dollars. Uh, and he then said, I'm not sure whether it's enough considering how much the other banks are paying their CEOs. I asked the director of HR, can you tell me what is the medium income of the employees of this bank? He said he didn't know. I asked him, what is the Gini coefficient of this bank? He said he never heard of the term. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, you know, I love Singapore. Huh? I love Singapore. I love Singapore. I would die for Singapore. I would die for Singapore. But are we a perfect people? We are not. We are not a perfect people. But I believe that we can always be better. And in the remaining years of my life, I want to dedicate my, my time, energy, to making Singapore an even better place and Singaporean an even better people.